Yeah. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. What's happening, guys? Dan here, DD Speed Shop. So, a little bit of a different day. Well, is there any normal days? Man, I'm in the old garage. It feels so small. <laughs> anyway, um, plan today we got to get this thing outside so we can bring the wagon inside and start working on that mechanically. Motor swap, uh, needs a new hood, uh, a few little odds and ends. We've got the heater going in the background. I've been keeping it cold in here, but and using it as a small amount of trash storage. We gotta get that taken care of. We last got this thing in, the battery was no good. It wasn't starting. So we got it on the, on the charger. Doesn't say bad cell, so that's good. Uh, so my buddy Mike's coming by. Uh, I'm trading him, I give him this old compressor, and uh, he's bringing the wagon. So I want to see if we can get this thing running. Unfortunately, while running, it'll go. If the battery was dead, we can boost it, it runs. Oh, it might have been out of gas. Now I'm thinking about it. Huh. But the big issue was it didn't have one, two. The, the linkage or something like that was unhappy. So I'm going to get this thing. Man, it's so tight in here. How do I ever work in here? Um, I'm going to get this thing up on stands, just the front end up. Hopefully I can then reach under there and see what the deal is. I'm hoping just the linkage fell off or something very simple. So just nothing, nothing happens at all. And then we can get first gear and we can drive it out because it's ultimately just going to go right out there. For the time being, we'll work on the uh, wagon for, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks and then we'll drag it back in and start working on it. That's my plan. So. I'll get this thing up. Hopefully it's something simple and hopefully there's gas in it. Probably has a fuel gauge actually, it must work. It didn't start, it, it fought me. It's got these Mickey Thompson race slicks on it. It's a friggin' nightmare, so. Oh, and it's nighttime. So it should be uh, another good video. Um, so in case you're new here, uh, my name's Dan and, and I'm, a, I'm a bit of an idiot. And uh, I'm gonna prove that to you real quick here. So we got the battery charger on the back. Uh, Cause this thing actually originally years ago had a rear mount battery and I always had trouble cranking and stuff so I think I left this hooked up and I just put a front battery in for some reason and it always cranked really good um when I was towing, towing this thing in uh well we ended up ripping the license plate off uh slightly my my fault uh, for, let me just you know, I was tired and frustrated and whatever excuses you want anyway so charger on the back um, I pulled this battery out and I was, so I was going to mess with it and stuff. And I noticed on it, it's dated 2007. Maybe that's the problem. So put a battery in from the Nomad. I'm like, okay, well, let's see if this thing starts just to make sure. Um, so I'll hop in this thing real quick. Oh God. Make sure she's neutral and uh well there you go she fires up still got something goofy there bad ground or something but anyways i was like okay so i go like messing around with the shifter and i get i can hear it it feels like it's doing what it's supposed to but for whatever reason it would not move and it would stall out and it, was, it felt like it was burning clutch it was like all i could go in was third, fourth, third, fourth, no matter what I was doing. So I'm like, well, that's weird. And then I go to take my foot off the clutch and it got hung up on the uh, park brake. I had put the park brake in and forgot it on. And then in the last video, when I was screwing around and trying to get it uh, running and all this, I guess the park brake was on. So, on the plus side, I don't have to jack this thing up. Now the charger is still hooked up there, but goes ahead, no big deal. We have reverse. Look at that. So I'm an idiot, but I was smart enough to diagnose the problem before jacking it up and crawling on a cold concrete floor. So I'm gonna call that a win. Anyway, I'm gonna get the junk out of here. We're gonna move all the stuff uh, out of the way of the garage because we've got my trucks out there. And then 
Now we'll try and rodeo this thing out in the snow a little bit. Away from Mike, you dropped the car off. So I'll bring you back when we're doing some driving. All right. Mikey's on his way. Let's get this Nova out, hopefully. Park it on the street. Ugh. No one will jack with it. And uh, hopefully it will start again. Gentle. It's amazing how it just drives when you don't have the e-brake on. I'm sure it was good for the clutch. So I think I'm just going to put it on the street so we have all the room in the world. Because it's dark out. Oh. Alright, so. Park here. And then, uh, next thing you see us, we'll be unloading that hot rod. Oh yeah. Look at this junker roll up. Hopefully it'll unload easy. So it was actually the next day, and I thought I'd leave the, uh, the car in the garage overnight. I had the heat on low, so we're talking, uh, I don't know, 50 degrees or so like that. That's the benefit of two garages. I only have to heat one uh, nice and warm, and the other one I kind of keep a little cool. And I would get a bunch of snow, and it's blowing snow in like crazy, and the door doesn't fit too good. And let me give you the list of excuses. Anyway, so it kind of melted off. I was like, okay, well, it's time to probably do a little... A little walk around video, so it's just getting set up and took the hood off. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. So, I was gonna give everyone a quick tour of this hot rod, but uh, as it appears, it may need a little bit more melt time. Um, but it is a big block, and I did have a bunch of money <laughs> in this thing. <laughs> oh. Am I the problem? I might be the problem. Anyway, I uh, I pulled out my little propane heater there, so it's like a 60,000 BTU jobby. So we'll, uh, we'll let that cook for a while and get rid of some of this Canadian rain. Okay, so about an hour later, we got some of the snow melted off, and you know what? I thought, this thing's so tough, it'll, it'll probably just start. But uh, before we get into that, I wanted to do a little walk around. So by this point, if you guys have been around for a while or whatever, you know my plan is this big block Chevy is going to go in my Nova outside. So I'm going to make a big block tunnel ram, four speed, 12 bolt, 71 SS Nova. Uh, kind of like a Crusher Camaro, but a notebook. So that's what I have, the parts that are available. I was looking for a Tri-5 Chevy wagon for quite a while. And this one came up by accident. The guy originally had a set of headers, went about the headers, started talking tri fives. He said he had a wagon. Pretty sure I paid a thousand bucks for it. It was rough. Not that it's much better now, but it was really rough at the time. Um, it had no floors in it, rockers were bad, lower fenders, uh, dog legs in the doors. That's very common in, on tri fives to rust up in there as well. But the rest of the car, I mean, uh, the roof is dented to hell, but it is original paint. All the glass was decent. Uh, I did put a windshield in it. So my original plan was put this thing together as a cruiser that would look a little ridiculous uh, with this tunnel ram uh, hood. I have a couple of bird catchers up there. I had a bird catcher on it with a big hole in the hood. And I loved it. And then I bought this ridiculous hood. Honestly, it just kind of came up. It was not very much money and I wanted it. <clears throat> I know it's ridiculous, pro stock hood. So, it is a 454, it's nothing crazy, it's uh, got some sort of Lunati cam in it, it's a 70s block, early 70s, with 781 heads, they've kind of been gone through, you know, obviously it's got the Edelbrock uh, Street Ram, or Performer, whatever it's called there, the set of Hollies on it, headers, aluminum water pump, uh, you know, kind of stuff. 
The motor was a buddy of mine's. It was originally a jet boat. I kind of got a deal on it. I basically paid what I thought the intake manifold and carburetors were worth, like 1500 bucks or something like that, which is probably like retail. But then you got the rest of the motor for free. And then I bought the headers, I think, from a guy used, had to make them fit, whatever it is. So we didn't have a lot of money in it. And then I did spend up and I bought a 700 R4 transmission rebuilt. So it's got an overdrive transmission. Now I know the overdrive transmissions really aren't meant to be behind a big block, but this was going to be a bit of a poser hot rod that honestly I thought we'd take on hot rod power tour. Got the dogs in the back, all that sort of stuff. Well, life happened. Border's been closed for a couple of years. That obviously didn't happen. Since then, I miraculously found a 55 Nomad, and now I kind of think it might be getting some of my love. So I don't know what I want to do with this thing, but at the very least, the direction is going to change. So I do have a small block and a Turbo 350, so I'll probably have to get a drive shaft made, but whatever. So we got this little motor here, which uh, eh, I think it'll be okay. I think I have an intake for it. I got to find a carburetor. That's a Turbo 350 with a, a stall in it. That's a stall converter with a shift kit. So it'll be fine. I'll clean that stuff up. It's used, but it's known good used, if you know what I mean. So we'll slap that all together with some miscellaneous parts I have lying around, probably on the cheap and make this thing a runner driver. It currently is a runner driver. We'll just maintain that. I do have a stock hood for it. So we'll put it on a set of steel wheels and it'll just be like a nice cruiser. I did spend not a lot of money, but a lot of time on this thing. And it probably doesn't show <laughs> with the way it looks, but it's quite a bit further along than it really is. This is like a roadkill car that's been properly maintained as far as I'm concerned. So it's got all new wiring front to back, new lights. I mean, every little, every socket on it is brand new. New, brand new fuel tank, new fuel system, new brakes. Uh, we went through, I mean, it like, look at how dented up this tailgate is and all beat up. But I welded it all back together on the inside, made it work. See these, I got all the cables working and stuff like that. So it's proper stuff. Uh, oh, got this working. Uh, it's all full of junk. I ended up redoing all the whatever this kind of coating is and stuff like that. So it's all done. I mean, there was a lot of stuff done to this car to make it look kind of nice. I went through each and every door. So every window works. Uh, door panels are a little, a little ratty, but I mean, windows work, door locks work, wing windows work, door handles. Had the seat recovered, new carpet kit, tilt steering. I mean, Brand new wiring harness, oh, it's probably dark in there. Brand new wiring harness in the thing. Uh, put a brand new heater car in it, have a heater, so that all works. Um, I did have the wipers working, but I think I had them all apart because it got a little tight with the uh, tunnel ram, because that's where the <laughs> wiper motor goes, but that all worked. Uh, giant aluminum radiator, disc brakes, dual master, new metering block, the whole front end. I left this thing on purpose ratty. I had the battery charger on, the battery was still good. So even though it's all original stuff, new shocks, all brand new bushings, ball joints, tie rods, you name it, uh, rear springs, all the, all the bushings were done there, shocks the whole way around. I mean, this thing was, it was gonna be a cruiser. I really thought Danny would drive it. We cruise around, have the dogs in it and all that. Well, like I said, times have changed or plans have changed. So it'd be more of a stock hot rod. <sighs> Don't jump down my throat here, but I think it may turn into a small parts car. So when I bought these cables and the retractors and all that, it was $400, I think. So I'm gonna steal that stuff, put it in the Nomad, um, the back seat, Unfortunately, I'm having issues finding a back seat. So this one, even though it's not, you know, fancy, it's it's in decent shape. So the, the bottom actually folds up, the top folds down, then you have the full length. And it's literally just held on with a few bolts. That is probably going to end up in the Nomad as well, I'm thinking. So this car is going to give up a bit of its soul, which is, which is kind of sad. But I think when the rubber hits the road, a factory SS uh, Nova, 
four speed. It was a small block car, putting a big block in it, so it has to give its heart worth it. And then a 55 Nomad just has more value than a four door 56, unfortunately. So the seat uh, and some of the uh, tailgate stuff will, will end up going over there. But I don't think it'll hurt the value of this thing too bad if I do decide to sell it. Um, I'm really fighting out if I should keep it. I got a lot of cars right now. I think it's worth a few dollars, but I don't think it's worth a pile. And honestly, my buddy Mikey lets me store at his place free of charge. Um, it might just go back there after I make it a runner driver and rob some parts off of it. So, you think it'll start? I have, I have confidence in it. This was a, a good car. The motor, the big issue we're gonna run into, it has some sort of oil leak. I don't know what it is. I've had it all apart but it still leaks and it leaks steady only when it's running. And uh, I don't know if I ever had the intake manifold off this thing. I might've, and I did change the distributor. So I'm thinking maybe it's something like that back there, but it's so friggin' tight in this car with the stupid motor. I think getting it out, getting it on a, on a, a run stand and just letting it run and being able to see exactly what's leaking and going from there. Cause I have changed the oil pan gasket. I actually changed the rear seal well, it was in the car, had the oil pan off. Just frustration took over on this thing, unfortunately. Frustration, had I just put a small block in it or an LS, like everybody said I should have, it probably would have been a lot easier. I, I do see this thing, I mean, uh, a little 4.8 or a 5.3 with the 700 uh, R. This would be a nice cruiser for somebody. If I didn't have six or seven tri fives already, it would be me. But anyway, we'll see if this thing will run. I have all the confidence in the world. Well, uh, let's just crank it over and make sure it has oil pressure and stuff. Uh, I'll hook the battery up and we'll be right back. Battery's connected. Yeah, there's still a little bit of snow there. I can't see it being any issue. So, let's see if this thing will crank over. Look at that fancy refinished seat we got there. Uh, I'll just see if it's got a little oil pressure. Okay. Ooh. Seriously? That was amazing. <laughs> well, now I'll do it again. What was that all about? Got oil pressure. <laughs> Maybe it's a sign I should... Uh, Keep this thing? I don't know. Sounds like it's missing on one. Well, let's get set up, get a camera on the outside. I'm shocked it uh, it ran that easy. Yeah, it still has brakes. This is like the heater works. Look at that. Three speeds. Oh, I put just some sort of aftermarket heater in there. That was pretty cool. Ah, oh, man, this thing is cool. I don't know. Look at all this junk in here. All right, let's get set up, see if we can uh, make it run. It was a little low on oil, and this thing used to uh, leak tranny oil. So I think it was out of the dipstick. I don't know if it'll have any gears, but uh, we'll find out together. All right, where's the confidence level? Let's open this door for a little ventilation. Smells a little fuely in here.
gears. Oh, that has a neutral safety switch. I think she's a little unhappy there. I'm gonna let it... my eyes. Well, there you have it. It runs. It moves. Who'd have thought? I built a car to actually can go back and forth two feet in the garage. It is still smoky in here, but I'm amazed how well this thing actually ran uh, with no real issues. It does have some tickety tackety noises up here, and it's done it since I had it. The guy got it off of a trust. It has lots of oil pressure, so couple of things I'm thinking one it does have sol solid motor mounts two these headers originally had a very strange collector it was a square with four bolts but the bolts were not in the corners they were in the center of the the square rectangle so I cut it off and I had to adjust everything and weld on some standard three bolt flange collectors could be exhaust leak where it's just going a little thuff 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 out of where I missed a little weld hole which is probably more than likely, or just a you know, burnt uh, kind of collector gasket or something like that. Or, it's so tight in here, I'm wondering if just a little bit of rattling, the motor is actually touching the steering box. In uh, years past, well I have done it before, but a big block Chevy and a Tri-5 with a uh, factory steering box, especially if it's moved ahead three quarters of an inch, nightmare, and that's what I did. I moved it ahead, so in a Tri-5 Chevy, the side saddle mounts, you have the option of going factory location or ahead. If you go ahead, you can fit a bigger distributor in. If you leave it in the back, you got to run like a mini distributor, which that's all irrelevant. We had carburetor issues. <laughs> so I uh, cut this out and I moved it three quarters of an inch ahead. We have a little bit more room for a distributor to get in there, even though there's not much, but that does move the tube ahead right in the worst part for the steering and it messes with your cooling system your fan all that sort of stuff so pick the battle you want i want a tunnel ram so that's the way we went but that's my plan for this thing so it's uh out of the snowbank we'll let the heat go overnight uh, on high tonight so just low let it all melt right out and i think we'll start working on it uh tomorrow or the next day i'm not too sure what anyways let me know what you think is it a good idea bad idea I mean, I realize it's a good car. Now, bear in mind, when I chopped up the 56 Chevy uh, sedan delivery, everyone thought I should chop this one up instead. I was ruining too good of a car. So am I going to ruin too good of a car? I'll see you in the next video.